Hey, it's Verity here on my YouTube channel and blog, Pretty Little Button. If you're new here, I make paper crafting tutorials for the everyday crafter, and today I'm taking part in Alter News 6th Anniversary Blog Hop for Bumbleberry Paper Crafts. Bumbleberry Paper Crafts is a UK and EU stockist of Alter New products, amongst many other brands. I'll talk more about the giveaway later on in the video. In today's video I have three cards showcasing a lovely teal colour combo along with using one stencil throughout for a cohesive set of cards. I've used a few different techniques with the stencil to create beautiful backgrounds for the floral stamping to sit on. So let's get started. So this first card features the alternate Florals Art stamp set and a tone on tone stenciled background. The stencil used Throughout is the alternate feeling dotty stencil, which is a great staple to have in your craft stash. Now I've just taped this down to some 110 pound Nina Classic Crest Solar White cardstock, and I'm going to apply some alternate embossing paste over the top. So I've used 110 pound cardstock as opposed to the 80 pound cardstock as the embossing paste will have moisture in it and this can warp your card so you'll want to use a heavier weight cardstock. I'm using a broad spatula to add the embossing paste over the stencil and as it's such soft light paste it makes it really easy to apply over the top and even if you're just opening the lid up you don't have to worry about it going hard in the pot over time. I'm only applying this over part of the background for a more contemporary look and feel to the card. It is important to remove the stencil as soon as you're happy with it, as you need to clean the excess paste off the stencil before it starts to dry. This card panel will need to dry before you add anything over the top, so we can get on with the stamping in the meantime. As I mentioned, this card features the alternate floral art stamp set, and the new packaging comes with a fold out guide showing you some examples to use the stamps in but also as a layering guide. So for this stamp set the first layer to stamp is the outline layer. This will help you align up the remaining layers. So I've stamped the outer layer in permanent black crisp ink from new, and once I'm happy with this I can then start aligning the second layer. So Sorry my head can get in the way, but it's really important to get over the top of your stamps when you're aligning the layers. This will give you the best results in the long term. As this is a new stamp set for myself, I'm first conditioning the stamp by rubbing an eraser over the top and wiping this off. This helps to remove any residual product from the manufacturing that may be sitting on top of your stamp, which can lead to some imperfect stamping. So the first layer was stamped in teal cave ink from the Cerulean Skies Mini Ink Cube set. And the last layer of this floral is the centerpiece of the flower and this was stamped in galactic cave ink. I love this teal colour combination as it really pops against that white space on the petals. And as this is quite a large floral, I decided to fussy cut right up against the edge of the design as I didn't want the white edge to it that you can get when you use the coordinating dies but if you prefer this you can use that as well. So for the leaves on this card I decided to use a couple of leaf clusters from the Retro Plantain stamp set from Alter New. I wanted a more muted colour tone and for, for the leaves and here I'm stamping the leaves in evening grey ink which is a lovely warm tone grey. So for these leaves I am using the coordinating dies to die cut them out just to give them a little bit more bulk to work well against the large floral. I decided that the background needed just a little bit more interest before I assembled the card so I decided to add some paint splatter. I'm just using a water bottle to spritz some of the jet black watercolour pan from my new watercolour 36 pan set. Then I'm using a round brush just to dip it into the paint and splatter the background. Now it did take me a while to decide on the layout for this card so don't be afraid to move the images around and around until you find an arrangement you like. Believe me it doesn't always come to us straight away. 
To build the interest more on the card, I'm using a selection of varying depths of foam pads to lay up the floral and leaf images. And I went and placed the cluster in the top left hand corner of the card panel. Now this card panel was adhered to a card base made out of soft stone cardstock from Gina K Designs. To finish this card off, I'm using the also new Thinking of You stamp set and I'm adding a heat embossed sentiment. So from this stamp set, I chose the Please Know I'm Here For You and During This Difficult Time. And these were stamped in WOW embossing ink before covering in WOW opaque bright white embossing powder and heat setting. Each sentiment was trimmed down into a strip to add onto the card using some foam pads. For the second card, I'm using the Feeling Dotty stencil again and embossing paste, but this time I'm going to colour the paste. So I'm smooshing teal cave ink down onto my glass mat, being quite generous because you have to bear in mind that the paste will lighten the colour because it's white. And then I'm applying the paste next to it with a spatula. Next, I'm just working the paste into the colour, mixing it as I go to get a nice smooth colour and consistency. I can then use the same spatula to apply the paste over the stencil and again I'm covering about half of the card with the paste. So as you remove the stencil the blue teal paste really pops off the white space of the card and creates a stunning contrast. Again this needs to be put to one side to dry and you need to clean your stencil off. The flowers on this card feature the floral clusters from the Altenew Ruffled Flowers stamp set and this is a favourite floral stamp set of mine. I love the whimsy style to the flowers. Again, these stamp sets work well when you first stamp the outline layer first as that's going to help you align the remaining layers. I've used the same colour combinations as before, so permanent black for the outline, teal K for the second layer and lastly galactic stream for the final layer. And as before, the leaf layers were also stamped in the evening grey. This stamp set has a coordinating die to cut the images out, but you can also fussy cut these out if you prefer. So again, with this card, I fiddled about deciding on the position of these floors for quite some time and based them on the position of the paste going diagonally up the card, making sure I overlap the clusters slightly. Now the panel had first been mounted onto a card base made out of tranquil teal cardstock from Gina K Designs. And then once the floral clusters had been foam mounted onto the card base, a sentiment from the ruffled stamp set saying hello sweet friend was stamped in one corner in permanent black ink. Now for the last card, the stencil had been applied over a piece of tranquil teal cardstock as previously seen and an embossing ink pad had been smooshed down over the stencil. Once the stencil had been removed, this was covered in white embossing powder and then I'm just heat setting it with my gun to heat set the powder. So this uses the stencil in a slightly different way. Instead of using the embossing paste, you're using embossing powders and it really gives you a lovely strong white um, design against the coloured background as an alternative method. The floral element on this card uses the lovely flower from the hand-picked bouquet stamp set. Again, using permanent black ink, teal cave, galactic stream and evening grey inks to stamp the image. This was then fussy cut out. Again, you can use a coordinating die if you have this to hand. And then this was placed on the embossed background. I felt it got a little lost in that very busy background, even though this floral image is quite a large stamped image. It needed something to ground the flower and draw the eye to the flower as opposed to the background. So I'm using a selection of circle dies to, to create three circle frames out of white cardstock. As you can see, I tried a selection of different combinations of what circle frames to use with the floral image. And I found in the end it worked best to use all three frames um, without the inner circle die in the middle. However, for a little bit more added interest, I used a variety of different dimensions of foam pads. And it's hard to see that necessarily here on video, but the inner frame used the least deep foam pad and each ascending frame then increased the depth of the foam pad. 
The flower was then foam mounted onto the card. The sentiment from the Hambic bouquet set was heat embossed in white on black card which was then trimmed down to go on the front of the card. So as I mentioned this is part of the all to new 6th anniversary blog hop for Bumbleberry Paper Crafts who are one of the sponsors on the hop. If you're watching this on my own YouTube channel or blog you need to make sure you head over to the Bumbleberry Paper Crafts blog to enter and to follow along the hop you will find a link in the description box below or a link on my blog. Bumbleberry's Paper Crafts is giving away a £25 gift card as part of the blog hop and there are many many other prizes along the way. I love how these cards turned out with the colour scheme running throughout to help tie them together along with the recurrent use of the stenciled background. I hope you enjoyed today's video and think about subscribing to the channel. Also press that bell icon so you'll be notified when my next video is up. If you're interested why not check out this other video as well. Until next time, happy crafting!